Hey everybody, got a quick DevTools tip for you here today. This is all about applying native image lazy loading via DevTools so we can actually verify the performance optimization worked. And I'm going to show you how we can do that, but before that, let's actually verify what the problem is. So Command Alt and I to open up DevTools. I've got Network Panel selected and I'm going to hit Command R. Now, in case you haven't seen this website, this is the web representation of my mailing list and there's a huge bunch of images being loaded, which are basically the thumbnails to the tip that I'm trying to share. Now, if I look at these resources, they pretty much are all the thumbnails for the tip, which is fine. I mean, it was fine a long time ago. Now that there's so many, um, there's definitely room for improvement. So that's over two megabytes of data being downloaded and over 200 requests. Now, of course, what would be great is if images which aren't in the viewport, if they didn't have to be loaded straight away. And that's what we're going to figure out how to do. A while back, possibly in a Twitter thread, I remember hearing that native image lazy loading is now a thing. So even before reading the documentation, I'll normally go to can I use and I'll search for lazy loading. This one, yeah, lazy loading of images. It's not amazing, but it's not bad at the same time. Um, because while again, it's very Chrome centric, that's still a pretty hefty percentage. And applying this feature isn't going to break it for the users on other browsers. So I think it's worth a try. Cool. So I really like MDN as a resource. So I always prefix my searches with MDN, in this case, MDN lazy loading. Um, I do struggle to find food recipes this way, however. So beware. And I think it was this resource, which was the right one. No, it was this one. But the important part is this attribute and that attribute value. Loading equals lazy. If somehow we can apply that attribute to these images, right? And just very quickly, Command Alt and New on Mac, um, and I can see the image tags are right here. So we want to kind of insert loading equals lazy via DevTools here, and then kind of profile what the changes are. Now we're going to head over to the Sources panel, and we'll go to Overrides. Typically, I'd spend some time explaining exactly what overrides are, but I reckon a very quick demonstration will explain everything you need to know about it. Again, sources panel, you'll have page selected by default. You go to overrides or you click here and make sure it's selected and then choose select folder for overrides. I'm on my desktop and I'm going to make a new folder called overrides. There we go. And I will select that folder. Great. DevTools now asks me, do I grant permission for write access to that folder? And that's fine. Just like that, we've got overrides working. What can we do now? Well, I'll give you a very quick demonstration. If I inspect this piece of text, uh, so that's my, my slogan, my call to action, if you like. It says, sign up to receive a developer tip and so on. I'm British, so apparently we're very polite. So I'll say, please sign up to receive a developer tip. Okay. I think most of us know that if you reload the page, you lose those changes that you applied here. However, if we go to the sources panel, specifically in the overrides tab, what DevTools will do is it'll start to persist the changes you've made. To actually trigger this and get this working, I need to go to the page pane index, um, which is my index HTML. And right here is my slogan. So again, I'll say, please, because I am polite and British, command S to save. And you see when I hit command S, you get this little indicator right there. Well, you'll see what that means. So I reload the page and that please appears directly in the slogan on the page. And that's pretty much the gist of what Overrides does. You can do the exact same thing for CSS, the exact same thing for JavaScript, and it's great for prototyping. But we have got a goal in mind. Let's find those images, and um, they're right here, and let's add that loading equals lazy. All right, first of all, screen real estate. I'm going to hit Command, Shift, and P, dot to bottom. There we go. And then I'll select this image, All right? And I can, don't get me wrong, I can just insert it right there, but I want to select all occurrences. So I'll use Command D, Command D, Command D, and so on. And right now I'm just holding it. So it selects all the occurrences of what was selected in my, my cursor selection. All right, hopefully that's everything. <laughs> Paste the loading equals lazy, hit Command S to save, I'm going to dock to the right once again. But what we can do is go to the network panel, right? clear what's already there. Right, remember before it was over 200 requests. And now fortunately we can see that's gone down to 33 requests, which for something so simple is actually a great performance win. 
that's, you know, now roughly half a megabyte of data being downloaded. Again, another excellent performance win. So I'm definitely going to apply this to my website. What I want to show you that's even cooler than this, and I really want to make use of screen real estate. So in fact, I will undock into separate window. Okay, so we've got DevTools nice and big here, and now I'll hit Command Shift P and type in changes. Turns out DevTools has a changes panel. I know, right, it's another one of those hidden things that you sometimes only find out about by accident. And in this changes panel, you kind of get this Git style diff of, well, basically the changes that you've made. Now, while we're here, I'll show you another technique of getting this working very quickly. I'm on example.com and I want to focus on a different way on getting that overrides feature working, but without DevTools. Very quickly, the benefits are you can try this in other browsers that don't support overrides. You can even try this on your mobile phone if you are able to point your mobile phone to a proxy. And hopefully that P word gives you a hint on what we're going to do. Proxies are actually far more powerful because they let you do things like not only change the, the response body, but you can change your request headers, the response headers, and all sorts. And very quickly, here's how it's done. So with the proxy open and let's see, proxy and Mac OS proxy selected, I am going to reload example.com. Okay, I go back to the proxy and you see it's intercepted that request. It hasn't done anything when it intercepted it. It chose to forward it on and nothing really changed. What I can do, however, is I can say tools, map local, I think it is, yep, and enable map local, add protocol can be HTTP, host example.com, port is anything, path, well, let's just choose the root, um, and then query is anything. Okay, and map to local path. So I'll choose a, let's see, an example.html. Um, so I'll hit OK, and now before I hit on this final confirmation dialog, I just want to get the contents of this example.com into my clipboard and then paste it into example.html on my desktop. And I'll change that example domain into example domains. Go back to Charles Proxy, hit OK, and hopefully that's all we need to get that working, and indeed it is. But all that being said, if you don't need to get that advanced, simply come over to the Sources panel, Overrides pane, select folder for overrides, make a folder on your desktop or whatever's convenient for you, allow permission, and just like that, you can begin to edit the website files via DevTools and have that persist to disk. Thanks for watching.